Today I want to answer a question for you, which I've had many times on the channel, and that is how hard do you have to spar to get good? Really good. Not just like looking good, but actually being able to go in to the gym or an actual ring fight and perform. Do you have to put on the 16 ounce gloves and go in and bomb? Or can you get away with more technical sparring and still be super high level? That's what we're talking about today. The interesting thing about this topic of how hard do you have to spar to get really good? Everybody's gonna have different takes on it. So I'm just giving you guys my opinion. And if you've been on the channel for a while, you know I am not a fan of hard sparring every week, mostly because of the damage and the risk for concern about long-term impact to the brain. Like that's always what I'm talking about. That's always what I'm worried about when we're talking about how hard should you be sparring week by week. But I need to give you guys my honest opinion about can you go in and spar, you know, just like that, play the game and still become really good if you're drilling really hard. Is that enough? Hard, hard drilling, full impact when you know what's coming, you can protect your head, but then light on the sparring. So I'm going to walk you guys through my opinion and it all starts with my background in fight sports. So I started off, I was doing point fighting, you know, didn't really develop that, that strength in the body from point fighting, obviously, because you're not taking massive impact. When I was around 14, 15, I started doing pretty hard rounds with full grown adults, even though I was only like 135 pounds, we were doing hard rounds with these guys, we being my brother and I, and the body started getting stronger and stronger, more condition, more used to impact. And then as I got up through the years in like 16, 17, 18, I started going, wow, I'm just feeling really good in these hard sparring sessions. I can take the damage, but not only that, the hard sparring rounds, which we were doing because the gym I was at, we weren't doing those pitter patter light rounds. We were doing pretty hard. It wasn't like we were told to go hard, but people in the gym would just naturally start going hard on you. Some people, not others. And then you basically have to fight back if you don't want to be knocked down or you don't want to just be a punching bag for the whole round. Now, the point of all this is much of my confidence as I started moving into my early years of fighting and then getting into the early stages of my pro fighting, a lot of my confidence was based off those early rounds, those hard rounds where I would go in probably three times a week and do six to 10 hard rounds with different people who were much bigger than me. That played a massive part, I believe, in the confidence I was able to build, the conditioning, being able to absorb shots. And then when I started fighting, going up against guys around my own weight, who were high level, but it felt like they were unable to hurt me because of that conditioning. So I will still always go back to the fact that I do not think you need to be doing hard sparring like I used to do three days a week for six to 10 rounds. When we start talking about 18 to 30 rounds of hard sparring per week, it's excessive. And if you don't have stellar defense, and I was fortunate enough through the years to have really good defense. I was able to block. I did not get knocked down one time ever in sparring. Being knocked down four times in fights, two of which came from Robin Van Roosmalen, one in my amateur career, and then one time when I fought Yuta Kubo, who at the time was the former, or no, he was sort of the current K1 champion at my weight class. So these guys, put me down, but I jumped right back up, was never finished in a fight, and never had a knockdown in sparring. So my defense was pretty stellar. But you still don't wanna be going in risking brain damage by putting in those intense rounds. So the overall question now is, can you get away with light sparring? That hard sparring, which built my confidence, is it necessary? And I believe 100% hard sparring is necessary to get good in terms of being able to perform in real fights in the ring. If you are somebody out there who is interested only in getting good at technique and being able to spar at kind of like 60, 70%, 
then you can do really light sparring, probably like 20, 30% kind of Thailand style when the guys are just playing. You can do that, execute hard drilling and still get very good. But in my opinion, you will never be somebody who is able to deal with the impact and who's able to deal with just the overall ferocious pace that a real fight brings if you don't almost replicate it in the gym. Again, just my opinion, but when we see people like Badr Hari and many of the top K1 fighters in the world doing their sparring, it's hard rounds, hard rounds. And then we have people like Max Holloway or Donald Cerrone who say, oh, okay, you know, now in the later part of my career, I'm doing light sparring. But keep in mind that they did a lot of hard sparring early in their career. And they're saying as they get to the end, they're toning down. They're not finding the hard sparring is helping that much. And that's pretty much the same situation with me. I go about 60-70% in my sparring. That is my preferred percentage. If I have somebody who comes and really wants to bring the heat, then yes, I will end up increasing that. But if somebody's happy with sort of 60-70%, that's fine with me. But to go through a fight camp at kind of 20, 30, 40% sparring, I will not have confidence going in the ring. I do not feel like my body will have the conditioning. And going in and putting those rounds occasionally when you're younger, doing 80, 90%, I don't love it, but I do think it's necessary. And if you're not doing these type of rounds ever, I don't feel like you will ever have that super high level ability to compete with the best in your town, your state, your country, the world, the hard rounds, I do believe, are essential to becoming a great high level fighter. That is just my opinion. You absolutely don't have to stand by it and go, Gabriel said this, it 100% means it's the way I have to do things. No, this is just my opinion. This is what I would tell one of my students if they went, you know what, I want to be a pro fighter. I want to be one of the best in the world. I want to win some of those belts that you have or maybe go in an MMA career. I would say, okay, we need to recognize that we're gonna to have to do some hard sparring rounds, maybe twice a week. I don't think we need to be doing something like 10 rounds like I used to do, but maybe five hard rounds twice a week. You gotta go through it. Otherwise, I will not be confident in putting you in the ring where somebody's gonna be trying to rip your head off. And that's just the reality. Somebody's coming to try and knock you out. You need to be prepared by putting in those hard rounds beforehand. Again, if you're just doing this for fun, that's not necessary. In my opinion, save your brain, have fun doing your sparring, build your technique. You can still be a very high level practitioner, just not somebody who's gonna be competing in the ring. If you guys enjoyed this episode, my take on whether hard sparring is very important to be a high level competitor or a high level martial artist, please give the video a like. If you have not already, join the channel, get subscribed. And as always guys, train hard. I will see you back here soon for another episode.